Hello and welcome to the webcast. I'm Kevin Faraka, Software Application Specialist with the PPI Group. And today's topic is Autodesk AutoCAD Civil 3D 2016. What's new? Today we're going to talk about all of the new enhancements and additions to AutoCAD Civil 3D 2016. These are the areas that have been enhanced, user experience, data exchange, project management, detailed design and production drafting. Under user experience, they have updated the user interface. Uh, there are some general enhancements if you're interested in finding out about AutoCAD specific enhancements, please refer to our AutoCAD 2016 What's New webcast. Uh, for more detailed information on the updated user interface. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on uh, elements that are specific to Civil 3D. So one of the things that you'll notice in Civil 3D 2016 is there is uh, no change to the AutoCAD drawing format. So it used to be every three years we would get a new drawing format. That is not true this year. Uh, also from Civil 3D 2013 all the way through Civil 3D 2016, you should have compatibility between your AutoCAD drawing file or between your Civil 3D drawing files. Um, which means that if I'm working on Civil 3D 2013, I give it to somebody that's working on Civil 3D 2016, they could give it back to me and I can still use that drawing. Uh, so now there's upward and backwards compatibility. I can see issues. Uh, within the um, pipe, pipe works and pipe catalogs. There are additions to the pipe catalogs as you've gone along. So what you would have to do is make sure that you have the proper catalog for the drawing that you're working on. Other things that we can do is we can bring in coordination models uh, from Navisworks or from BIM 360 Glue. I can bring in either Navisworks NWD or NWC models. and. Uh, navigate around within those models. I can also do some graphical elements to uh, change the, the shading and the transparency. There's also some enhancement within Civil for the point clouds. Uh, all of the point cloud ability that you have in AutoCAD uh, plus new enhancements for creating surfaces and things from those point clouds. Lots of enhancement to data exchange. So we now have data exchange formats. Between AutoCAD Civil 3D, Civil 3D uh, 2016 and InfraWorks 360, so we can transfer the files back and forth. Uh, it used to be that we would have to create one format to go to and have another format coming from uh, those different softwares. Now we can pass back and forth using a standardized format. Uh, we can also import and export AutoCAD solids to IFC files or Industry Foundation class files. Uh, which will allow us to bring those into Revit or uh, Inventor um, so we can pass those back and forth between other softwares that will accept IFC files. There's some enhancements to data shortcuts and project vault management. We'll be uh, focusing on the data shortcut management tool uh, but be advised there's also some enhancements to the vault professional software. Please refer to your uh, what's new videos with inside Civil 3D uh, will take you and uh, give you more of a breakdown of what's available to you in if you are using Vault. Under detailed design we can create Civil 3D, sur uh, Civil 3D surfaces from the point clouds as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we can uh, we also have new subassembly uh, loop support within the subassembly composer so if you're doing something like uh, uh, benching with inside a subassembly, you can specify a, a loop so that you don't have to define each individual bench. You can say loop so many times until you hit or loop so many times and then give me an error. Um, so we can put a programmatic a loop effect with inside the subassembly composer. Uh, we can create Civil 3D solids from the Civil 3D objects such as surfaces, pipe networks, and pressure networks. 
They've also done some enhancements to the catchments where we can do exclusionary catchments and then um, coordinate different um, targeting for the alignments. We've always had the ability to target the alignments uh, or target uh, feature lines and polylines by layer and now they've added the ability for us to also target alignments by layer. Under production drafting, uh, they've given us what, what was uh, what was missing before, which was crossing pipe labels. So we can actually get labels where the pipes cross the alignment with the, the proper information as far as outside of the pipe, the crown of the pipe, the center line of the pipe, uh, the invert or the, the outside bottom of the pipe. We can also control the direction of cross-section views. This is not, I haven't run into this too much with uh, ground-based information, but when we're dealing with water-based information, uh, I run into this quite a bit, where we're looking down an alignment uh, and we're, when we're looking at the cross-section we really want to be looking up at the alignment um, so as we move down the river we want to be looking back so we have the right side of bank and left side of bank. Uh, we would have to do some, um, some manipulation before to do negative stationing on our alignments so that we could look at the left bank, right bank. Now we can just uh, swatch, swap the views so that we can do um, uh, look at our cross sections from the opposite angle. In summary, these are the areas that we're going to be looking at. The updated user interface, uh, the data exchange between Civil 3D and Autodesk InfraWorks, data shortcut management, creating Civil 3D point clouds from uh, our services from point clouds, subassembly loop information, creating AutoCAD solids from th Civil 3D objects, exclusionary catchments, corridor targeting by layer, oops, cross section pipe labeling, and controlling direction of section views. I'm just going to touch on a few of these subjects as we go along for time constraints. Um, but let's take a look. Oops. Let me open my AutoCAD here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually stop this. I'm going to take a, I'm just going to open a blank drawing. And I'm going to go into the X Reference Manager. And under the X Reference Manager, I can come down and I can attach a coordination model. So if I go into Coordination Model, you can see that I can attach either an NWD. If I pull this down, I can do NWC. So I pick the NWD, I can open it up. I'm going to accept the default placement. I bring that in, uh, let it uh, take a minute here, and I'm going to hit. By holding down the shift key and using my center wheel, I can actually tilt this and bring up our model. So if I zoom in, if I click on it, it handles like any other AutoCAD object. I do have some information here as far as fading and opacity that I can, can adjust. So I can fade the color in and out or make it darker and lighter based on the uh, where I'm showing this. Um, and what the screen looks like, how much, how dark I want it in relationship to uh, the objects that are actually in my drawing. And then I can also do opacity fading where I can fade the opacity. And if I had AutoCAD objects under here, I could see it bleed through. We also have some navigation tools. So I can switch between um, perspective and ortho orthometric view orthogrammatic view. Um, I have swivel and orbit so I can click on orbit and you notice if I orbit I can come here and look underneath and we can see our pipe network underneath the ground here. So if I was to bring in my own uh, my own pipe network and have my own pipe network in here I could check for clashes against this model. I also have some walking ability. If I zoom in here, I can come into 3D walk. It has to be in perspective mode. 
um, I can just push my arrow keys and what I'll do is actually walk through the building. I can move myself up and down. using the pan command and then by using my arrows I can actually walk through this building I can use the uh, the mouse to tilt my head or I can use the swivel command to look around if I'm standing in the building I can turn the model and look at this using the swivel command swivel my head into different directions So, similar to what we can do in Navisworks, we can actually move around inside the building. Um, our next area of effect that we're going to look at is this Data Shortcut Manager. I'm going to try to uh, uh, create a scenario here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to open up these three drawings here. So the scenario is that I ran a preliminary, I did a uh, preliminary site design on phase one using an existing ground uh, that was surveyed and we posted this survey out to a data shortcut or this surface out to a data shortcut so my existing ground was posted out under my surfaces as EG and then we finished up phase one and we started to design phase two so in here I have phase two they've laid it out and the problem is that they laid this out on uh, on the surface that we used under the phase one project and that's actually referenced into this drawing via the EG so what I want to do is uh, the, the surveyors have gone out since the the phase one was done and they went and they've resurveyed this information so they went in they resurveyed I have a new set of information here uh, for what we want to use in phase two because we want it based on current conditions not not the old conditions so if I go back here what we've done with this is this has a surface called EG surface or EG surveyed final and exported that out well it has a different name so I have my existing ground and then I have my existing ground surveyed final in my original or my original phase two drawing I started out using the EG but I want this to be the EG final we can go under the manage tools manage data shortcuts and I can pick my EG surface within the drawing and then I can pick my EG surface final over here and I can link these two which will then paste that EG uh, the road final surface surveyed into the name EG over here and I will resample and everything all the way through my drawing so if I say OK now it's updated and you can see that it's updated my surface over here so all of my information has been redone and replaced inside my my uh, resampled against inside my profile so I can repost or replace a surface with inside my drawing with a different uh, data reference surface. I think you'll find that very handy as you go along uh, and it's much easier to control via the new data shortcut manager. Close a couple of these drawings out.
So in previous version, they gave us the ability to take a corridor, and if we took, clicked on the corridor, we could go and we could extract solids from our corridor. So here we have the extract corridor solids. We could click on that. We could extract, tell it to extract all of our all of our corridor, all our baseline regions. We could go in and we can assign colors and uh, information to those subassemblies. So we could apply materials and colors to those subassemblies to control what this output is going to look like. also has all of these shapes we can apply all of the information to these shapes and to the, the loop benching or anything that was going on in there <coughs> when we do that we would go create uh, hit next and we could either insert those into the current drawing or we could add those to a new drawing if I did add add a new drawing um, then I can go in tell it where I want this placed I'll just call this corridor solids save that and replace it create the solids now if I go out and I open up that corridor solids and I let that regenerate zoom extent so I can find it I'm going to take a look at this three-dimensionally, and I have my corridor solids out here. If I go in and I change the shading on here, I change this to conceptual shading, you can see that I have these solids. And these are all individually uh, placed out here so I could grab these and apply materials to them here. I can take those solids into any, uh, or export these out to an IFC and take them into any program that I wanted to take those into. So that had, we had that ability prior. Now we can go in and export out other information such as surfaces or pipe networks. In this case, I'm going to go to my existing ground surface here, uh, do a selection, come over here under extract surfaces. I have extract solids from surface. So I can go in, I'm going to extract the, C, the EG. I'm going to give it a depth here, so my su surface itself is going to have a depth thickness to it. And I'm going to send these out as, an, as a uh, new drawing. So when I create solids, it'll go out. It tells me that this has been created, so I have a corridor EG solids. And if I come out here, open that up. So here's my corridor EG solids. Let that regenerate, zoom extents, pick on my surface, I'm going to hit shift and push down my, my wheel, so I'll go into orbit command, let that go, now I have my solids, if I go in and I change this to conceptual, um, you can see that there are my solids, and that is the depth that I was talking about that I have of three feet. So by deselecting that, I can hit shift, I can rotate this however I want it to. I can change this from conceptual to realistic. And I can look at it from other directions so that my lighting effects will happen. And I can view that as a solid. From here, I can take this and under my output, I can export this as an IMX file. Uh, I can export the, uh, if I go into uh, the Civil 3D menu browser, come down to export, I can go down to the bottom down here. I can export this out also as an FBX file, which means I can take it into to, uh, 3D Studio Max, or I can send it out as an IFC file, uh, Industry Foundation class file, and take that directly into Revit. So if I go in here and I want to export this out, I would go in, name this one. I'm going to do the corridor solid, so I have that checked. It's going to go out to EG corridor solids um, as a uh, IFX, IFC file. I export that out. It will process it, send it out, and then let me start Navisworks here. 
and I'm just hoping now this works 15 and we'll take a look at that when it comes up Sorry about the delay, I should have had that up to begin with. So here's my Navisworks file, I will go and just open that up. Here's my Corridor EG Solids IFC, and I can open that up and I can see this inside Navisworks. Let's go ahead and change our mode here to folder, add some lighting, add some background. see I need to apply some different lighting effects, scene lighting or head lighting so I can see that surface. Let's go ahead and get out of there. I'm going to close this down. Open up and show you another new feature here. So I'm going to go into my pipes drawing here. And what I want to do is I want to look at right in here, I've got some crossing pipe information that I'm interested in. And I want to take a look at this and see where it's crossing my, uh, my alignment here. I'm going to take these, uh, draw these parts in the profile view, come over here and place them in here. And for right now, I'm going to get rid of this water line. I don't need to see it. So I'm just going to erase it out of here. And these are the two pipes that I want to take a look at. So what I'm going to do is I want to see these as crossing pipes. Right now you're looking at them, but you're looking at them in a, um, a, at an angled view, so they're not giving us a true view of what these pipes look like. So the way to change these to crossing pipes is not through changing the style on the pipes themselves, but to go into the click on the profile view, go into profile view properties, come down here to our different pipes and change this to a different style. So I'm going to override with inside this profile view this pipe to be a crossing pipe storm. And then I'm also going to do the same thing up here. Here's my other pipe. I'll override it and change it to crossing pipe storm. When I go back, now you can see that these come up these are true slices through these pipes now uh, before we were getting uh, very faceted uh, cross-sectional views of our pipes now we get a nice smooth uh, cross-sectional view of our, uh, of our crossing pipes and we can go in and we can do some labeling so if I click on this pipe I can go to add labels add pipe network labels I'm going to labeled by single part in profile and I'm going to leave my pipe label and my structure label off but I do want to add a crossing pipe label and this in this case is crossing pipe storm when I add that on I can pick the object and it adds my label now I have escape a couple of times grab the grip of this label uh, I can bring it out it gives me the pipe bottom the pipe top if I go in and I edit this label style and edit the current style and go look at what the content is so if I come in here and look at the content 
right up in here um, I have the ability to go in and change or add the the pipe outside top elevation uh, the pipe crown elevation the pipe station uh, the pipe center line the pipe inward elevation and the pipe outside elevation so all of that information that's pertinent to me with the crossing pipe and this is exactly where it's crossing the alignment so this is not at either end this is just where that crossing pipe crosses the alignment which is the information that I really need so this if this is one pipe alignment crossing or one pipe crossing another pipe alignment I will get um, I will be able to, to test the, the elevational difference between the pipes. So I could list these off in both of these and, and see what the elevational difference is between the top and the bottom. So a ha handy information for us, that's one of my, uh, uh, one of the better additions that I felt they've put in this year. I'm going to shut that down and we're going to go ahead and bring up a new drawing. So I'm going to start a new drawing and I'm going to go ahead and bring in um, a point cloud. So under my insert tab I'm going to go over here and uh, we've already processed this through Autodesk Recap so I'm bringing in an Autodesk Recap file. So I'm going to go in and attach an RC, uh, RCS file and I'm going to grab this roadway RCS accept the default location say OK it'll put the point file in and it zooms to the point file now we can control this point file when we click on it we have some things that we can do with the point file itself uh, we can change the point size so if I'd rather see this as fine points I can do that or I can thicken the points up they get very splotchy um, you can pick the level of detail. So how much level of detail do you want with inside these? There's another option that you have if you right click on here and go to the options tab. You can control uh, via the user, uh, sorry, the 3D modeling tab, how, what is the maximum number of points you can bring in per drawing. So if I go in under point clouds per drawing, I can go ahead and put that information in. I'm just going to bring it up to the full boat, say OK. Now I want to go in and um, I want to create a surface from this point cloud. So if I go in and I click on the point cloud itself, oops, so I can grab it, grab the point cloud, I can go into uh, the, the create surface from point cloud is the new thing that we have over here. So one of the things I can do is crop this. So let's do this first. I'm just going to go in and crop this, this down. So I'm only looking at a smaller portion of this. So I'm going to go into rectangle. I'm going to take and I'm going to crop this down to just this area. When I go into create point surface from point cloud, I want to be inside here. Okay. Create, create surface from point cloud. I'm going to name this uh, EG. and uh, no filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these one without a filter and then the second one that's filtered. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, for right now, I'm going to just turn this as contours and triangles. I'm going to say next. It asks me what I want to put in. Well here's my point cloud. I have a setting here for the distance between points and if I don't change anything I'm going to be using 4 million points. Well, it's pretty big for a surface and the number of triangles I would have to create. So I'm going to change this. We're going to drop this down. Let's see what happens when we do 1. Well, 1's not bad. We drop it to 318. Uh, still quite a bit of points for a surface, so I'm going to, just for expedience sake, I'm going to set this to a distance of 2, and that will bring this down so now I'm using um, 100,000 points, which is not bad. So we'll go ahead and use the 100,000 points. I'm going to hit next on this, and we're not going to do any filtering. So it's going to take every point as being its proper elevation, and um, and we're just going to go ahead and use all of the points that we see. So I will create this surface. 
it's creating this surface in the background um, and it will notify me when it's finished so you'll see it pop through here and it will do a little bit of uh, triangulation on there when it's finished it, my surface pops up I could go in and do some surface editing and clean this up if I'd like um, around my outside limit this to a boundary uh, that I'd like to limit it to uh, whatever I want to do here inside the point cloud for right now I'm going to turn this surface off so I'm just going to click on the surface uh, escape here click on my surface go to surface properties change this from contours and triangles to no display now I'm going to make a second one the exact same way I just did so I'm going to go in and I'm going to click on my point cloud. I'm going to create a surface from the point cloud. Call this eg-filtered. And I'm not going to create any. Um, I'll just create this as a border only. Uh, we're going to take a look at it differently. So. I'm sure that you've all seen surfaces being created. I'm going to go next. I'm going to accept the whole thing. Let's go to the two for our setting like we did before so we're matching. Hit next. This time I'm going to use, you could use the planar method which tries to take an average of, and figure out what's above ground and what's not. Or you can do a little bit more um, interpolation in here by Krieging. And the Krieging method will try to filter out um, what it sees as being above ground and only accept the the points that would be um, what some term is scorched earth points. Trying to filter out vegetation and things that are above the ground. Uh, so we can take this, we can create the surface. You can see it's triangulating, it's doing it, all of its calculations the same as we did before. In the meantime, while that's working, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take a polyline. I'm just going to put a polyline down through my, my object here. Uh, maybe we'll come to here and then arc this and then come out here. Now I can't see that very well, so if I click on the surface I can actually adjust the uh, the level of detail and I can have that come back up so you can see that's where my polyline is. <coughs> it has created my surface. <coughs> there is my surface boundary. I'm going to click on my polyline, right click and I'm going to oops, make sure it's the only thing I have selected. Click on my polyline, right click, uh, go to quick profile and create a, create a quick profile. So I'm going to use my filtered uh, I will put that as existing ground and my no filtered. Let's put this as a different style so it gives a different look to it. Um, let's just do a, uh, oh, we'll do, let's do, let's do a left sample profile, give it a different color. Um, when I say OK, pick my profile. Now let's put it in there. You can see this line, I guess it didn't really give them different colors. A little bit. This is magenta up here. This is my non-filtered surface. And you can see that it bounced all over, up and down, over the tops of the trees. through that, Just through that cross-section. If I look at the filtered, this would be the filtered line. So you can see it does a pretty good job. That would be the filtered line does a pretty good job filtering out all of that uh, elevational information. Um, so we get a much more realistic looking surface from a scanned image. So one of the last things I'm going to show today is uh, I'm going to go into the catchments here. Close this out so I'm not fighting the point cloud information. So in here I have an existing ground and you can see that I have a definite valley through here that I have a flow coming down through. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the catchments. I'm going to come to this catchment group 
and uh, I'm going to create a catchment from surface. So <clears throat> it asked me for my discharge point. The first discharge point I'm going to pick is down here in the lowest area down here. Um, let's just give this overall. Uh, and it'll be the catchment group. I'm going to have, keep it exclusionary. Um, I'm going to run all of this other information. Let's give it name, area, and properties. And that's, I don't think we're going to change any other information. We'll go ahead and leave it at that. Say OK. And it will create our catchment and we'll uh, calculate based on our surface where the catchment is. And notice that it also gave us this TFC line. Um, So the concentrated flow line down through here, and it gave us the information on that, what that that information is. And it's given us the arrow overall area right here. So I can go in and create another one if I pick a discharge point. And I'm going to create this, and maybe I want to do pick a point here, and I'm going to call this north. have it exclusionary. We're not going to do anything different. We'll leave it as is. Uh, let's go ahead and change this to name area as property. Say OK. And it will recalculate and exclude that from the other uh, from my other catchment. So there I have my flow concentration for this one. You can see that it highlights up. And then I also have in here, this is my original and it's recalculated where that goes and this has a new uh, flow concentration line. And it separated these two into the two different areas. So I have the exclusionary areas around my, my catchments. So that's it with the demonstration for today. Uh, those are highlights of some of the new features of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2016. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. All of the contact information is on the front page of our website or uh, in the contact information on our website. Uh, please give us a call or send us an email if you have questions on it. Thank you for attending and have a great day.